Just like other neuroimaging data, diffusion images need to be pre-processed before they are analyzed. Pre-processing removes sources of noise from the image, such as movement artifacts and other distortions. Diffusion data in particular is susceptible to warping artifacts as a result of the phase encoding direction, which we'll talk about in a little bit. To begin, the first pre-processing step we will do is denoise the data by using MRTRIX's denoise command. This requires an input and an output argument, and you also have the option to output the noise map with the dash noise option. For example, this command would read dwi denoise followed by the name of our input image followed by the name of an output image, which I'll affix with a den. So I'll just take a moment to run. When it finishes, check whether the residuals load onto any part of the anatomy. If they do, it may indicate that the brain region was disproportionately affected by some kind of artifact or distortion. To calculate this residual, we will use another MRTRIX command called MRCALC. In this case, MRCALC, the diffusion-weighted input image, and then the diffusion-weighted denoised image. And then we subtract the two and call the output residual.mif. You can then inspect the residual map with MRView. It is common to see a gray outline of the brain as in the figure here, if you can see it. However, everything within the gray matter and white matter should be relatively uniform and blurry. If you see any clear anatomical landmarks, such as individual gyri or sulci, that may indicate that those parts of the brain have been corrupted by noise. You can see some alternatives on how to address this in the link down below. We now move on to distortion correction. Most diffusion datasets are composed of two separate imaging files, one that is acquired with a primary phase encoding direction and one that is acquired with a reverse phase encoding direction. The primary phase encoding direction is used to acquire the majority of the diffusion images, while the reverse phase encoded image is used to unwarp the primary images. We use both to create an average that will cancel out the effects of warping. Our first step is to convert the PA, or posterior to anterior, phase encoded image into .MIF format. We will also add its B values and B vectors into the header. As in the last video, these commands can be found in the more info box down below. The MRConvert command you see here will take the PA image, which consists of two B0 images, and then use the MRMath command to take the mean of the two and output it into a file called mean B0 PA .MIF. Next, we extract the B values from the primary phase encoded image, or AP image, and combine the two with the command called MRCAT. This command will use the B0 option to extract only those images that have a B not gradient apply to them, and then take the mean of all of those and output them into a file called mean B not AP.MIF. We then use the command MRCAT to concatenate both the mean B not images of the AP and of the PA images, and we call the output b not pairmif We now have everything we need to run the main preprocessing step, which is called by DWI FSL preproc. For the most part, this command is a wrapper that uses FSL commands such as topup and eddy to unwarp the data and remove eddy currents. For this tutorial, we will use the following line of code. The first arguments are the input and output, as we've seen with the other commands. And we'll call the output here subo 2 den preproc.mif. The second option, no cleanup, will keep the temporary preprocessing folder, which contains a few files that we will examine later. Dash PE DIR AP means that the primary phase encoding direction is anterior to posterior, and RPE pair combined with the se epi options indicates that the following input file, in other words, b0 pair, is a pair of spin echo images that were acquired with reverse phase encoded directions. Lastly, dash eddy underscore options 
specifies options that are specific to the FSL command Eddy. You can visit one of the links below for more options and details about how to use Eddy. For now, we will only use the options dash dash SLM equals linear, which can be useful for data that was acquired with less than 60 directions per shell, and data is shelled, which indicates that the diffusion data was acquired with multiple B values. This command can take several hours to run, depending on the speed of your computer. For now, we will fade out and come back when it is done. When it finishes, examine the output to see how eddy current correction and unwarping have changed the data. Ideally, you should see more signal restored in regions such as the orbital frontal cortex, which is particularly susceptible to signal dropout. If we use this MR view command, we use dash overlay load to load the original data on top of the pre-processed data. This command will display the newly pre-processed data with the original diffusion data overlaid on top of it and colored in red. To see how the eddy currents were unwarped, open the overlays tab and click on the box next to the image sub 2 dwi.mif. You should see a noticeable difference between the two images, especially in the frontal lobes of the brain near the eyes, which are most susceptible to eddy currents. Once that's done, we will create a mask. As with fMRI analysis, it's useful to create a mask to restrict your analysis only to brain voxels. This will speed up the rest of your analyses. To do that, it can be useful to run a command beforehand called DWI bias correct. This can remove inhomogeneities detected in the data that can lead to a better mask estimation. However, it can in some cases lead to a worse estimation. As with all the pre-processing steps, you should check it before and after each step. This command uses the ANTS option, which requires that you install Advanced Normalization Tools on your system. A link for that is down below. After that, you simply supply again the input image and the output image, and we can also save the bias fields as well. You are now ready to create the mask with the DWI2Mask command which will restrict your analysis to voxels that are located within the brain. This command, again as with the other ones, only requires a input image and an output image, which in this case we will call mask.mif. Now check the output of this command by typing mrview mask.mif, and you should see something like the following. MRTrix's DWI to mask command works well in most scenarios. However, you can see that there are a few holes in the mask within the brainstem and the cerebellum. You may be uninterested in those regions, but it is still a good idea to make sure the mask doesn't have any holes anywhere. See the link down below for other mask generating options in the ebook. Now that we have our pre-processed diffusion data and a mask, we are ready to do constrained spherical deconvolution, which we cover in the next video.